there. I want to thank you for tuning in to this episode of Mid Mo Mama. My name is Jenny and I live in Sedalia, Missouri in the United States where I am making in the Midwest. This is a program about yarn crafts such as crochet and knitting. It's also about food in which I will bring you into my too small kitchen and I will make wonderful things for you. I'll either be cooking or baking, baking in each episode. So you want to stay tuned for that. And I'll also be talking about whatever else I feel like talking about because this is my show and I can talk about whatever I want to. Um, I am recording this video on Tuesday, March 3rd for upload on Thursday, March 5th. In this episode, we're starting off with a giveaway of all things. I can't believe I have a giveaway on my first episode, but I do. So I'm very excited to share about that. I have a finished object to share with you. And I have a recipe for almond triangles that I'm going to share. And, and so much more. So let's get started. So here we are in the part of the show called Mama's Show and Tell. And this is where I show you the stuff I have gotten recently. I don't get much stuff anymore. I used to, I used to be prolific about buying yarn. And it has reached um, obscene proportions. And so in 2020, I kind of decided that I am not buying a whole mess of yarn just to buy a whole mess of yarn. Um, I have to have a specific pur purpose in mind. So um, I have a friend that I know who is getting married um, in June. And her wedding colors are plum and snapdragon orange. And I was having a difficult time finding an orange. Um, but I found the precise color of plum that I think um, she will like. So here's what I got. I got, uh, this is called I Love This Chunky. It is a Hobby Lobby yarn. I got, I got six skeins of this. It is regularly $4.99. But it was 30% off this week. Every other week, um, Hobby Lobby yarns go on sale for 30% off. So I got these for $3.49 a ball. So I got six of them. I couldn't find an orange in this yarn that I liked. Um, that, you know, would, you know, I'd be able to get away with calling it Snapdragon Orange. Um, so what I decided to do, I bought six. Um, so, so I'm going to make her a monotone blanket, um, afghan, throw, you know, something small to drape over yourself. But I was thinking I would make the afghan and perhaps maybe I could find, um, a couple of throw pillows, maybe one or two. Because my idea is, okay, on the sofa you would drape it across the back of the sofa and then you would set it off with... A couple of um, throw pillows on each corner of the of the couch. So, um, so that's my brain thinking. So I hopefully I'll be able to find a couple of orange throw pillows and make this monotone um, purple um, plum plum uh, afghan. Um, I'm hoping six skeins will be enough. I have not browsed patterns. Because um, my initial intent was to get an orange or a plum and, you know, a neutral color to kind of tone down um, the intensity of the brown, the purple and orange together. Um, but now I'm going monotone, so um, hopefully six will be enough for one single throw, I, I would imagine so. So this is a bulky yarn. Uh, number five. 
It is 100% acrylic. It's very beautiful, if you can see. Um, it's very puffy. Um, so, um, and I don't know about you, when you make... So many people, they're um, not afraid to mix and match brands of yarn. Um, so if I had found an orange, I really didn't know if I was going to be able to um, find something um, similar to this. I'm sure there's plenty out there. I just don't know. And I'm not adventurous enough to blend uh, various brands of the same type of yarn. Uh, at any rate, this is 100% acrylic. Um, it's 3.5 ounces, uh, 500 grams, it's 109 yards and 100 meters, so, um, so there's that. I, um, the name of this colorway is, um, 108 Plumberry, so I think this is pretty, um, nice. Here I am holding it upside down, but that's what I'm getting, that's what I got, um, as a matter of fact, I just picked these this up this past Monday, so so there's that. Um, and the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, I'm really excited. I have to turn my put my pages up so I don't forget to to mention things. Um, so I'll throw this up on the screen so that you can see the the website. But there will also be a link in my show notes. Yes, I do intend to post show notes. Um, in the in the dialogue box below so i do ask that uh, that you take a look at those for links of anything that i discuss hopefully i'll be able to get all of them in there i may forget i can't make any promises um but the next thing on my show and tell um i have recently started making socks for the first time um i made I made a pair in September, and I just recently finished a pair for my husband, which I will talk about soon. And now I'm making um, a pair of two-at-a-time socks for the first time. So anyway, I was browsing around on Etsy because I wanted one of those sock measuring tools. So I found one um, at an Etsy shop called A Needle Runs Through It. And I found this. It is a, um, it, it's called the, what is it called? <laughs> it's called something, I know. i show you. So it is called Toe to Toe Knitting Tool. It's for sock knitting. It's got a Kitchener stitch and bind off instructions. Um, it's a knitting tool for socks. It's a knitting measuring tool and ruler. That's the description. Um, there's two different sizes. This is the 12 inch size. Um, it come and um, I paid $25 for this. And there's also a 10 inch size uh, at, that's $20. But what it does, it's um, you got the inches, you got the inches there, and then um, it's broken down into quarter inches, so you got nine, you know, you got nine, nine and a quarter, nine and a half, nine and three quarters, and ten. And in addition to that, you've got centimeters on the other side, so you got the inches and you got the centimeters here. And then on the back of there, you got a stretchy bind off, and you've also got a Kitchener stitch. So it tells you how to set it up and then how to how to execute the Kitchener stitch, which is very handy. And it looks like it has even a um, oh, what do you call that? A gauge, a gauge measuring tool, and it's also got the needle, the needle uh, measuring uh, holes that you can measure. So it's made out of um, a fiberboard. I think it's it's not plywood, but it is a fiberboard. It's not exactly cardboard. I wouldn't call it cardboard because it's a little it's a lot more sturdy than that. If I tap it on something, you know, it's fairly sturdy. Um, and so I ordered mine. I got it real quick, and she included a. Uh, stitch marker and it's uh, 
says, all you knit is love. And she has several um, different stitch markers that's made out of the same materials as this. She also has sock blockers on her site, which are lovely. They are very lovely. I, I didn't need a pair, so I didn't buy any. But, um, but this is what I got. And so I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with what I purchased. And before I did my show and tell, I reached out to um, the owner of the store. Um, her handle on Etsy is Marisabel. Her name is Maria. But I reached out to her and I said, look, I'm about to start a... Um, a crafting show on YouTube and I asked you know wanted to give her a courtesy note and let her know that I was going to show her product on my show and she said yeah she said I'd appreciate you doing that she said if you do that she said I'd be happy to give one away and I was surprised I couldn't believe it. I said you really want to give one away she said absolutely I'd be happy to she said I'll give away a 10 inch one so without further ado, I'm going to tell you all about my giveaway. I, I, this is my first giveaway, but I thought it out and I think I have a pretty good plan. So I'm going to read this to you and I'm sorry for reading and not looking at the camera, but you know, reading is reading and it's very important that everybody understands the rules. So I'm going to go over that. So this is my giveaway announcement. Maria from A Needle Runs Through It has graciously offered to give away a 10 inch toe to toe sock tool from A Needle Runs Through It. It's a $20 value. So to enter, this is how you enter. You want to respond to the YouTube episode comments. Uh, Thread only. This is the only place I'm going to um, draw the winner from. So down below on your key, on your computer. Now, I, if you're watching YouTube on your television, which I do, you don't get access to the comments. Or if you're watching on your phone, I don't think you get access to the comments. But if you're watching on your laptop or computer, um, you'll have that dialog box below where you can put a comment. Okay? So that's what I'm talking about. So, <clears throat> okay, so you must copy and paste the following question exactly. The question is, do you knit or crochet socks? And then I want you to answer the question in the same comment. Okay, eligibility is not determined by your answer, but by whether or not you follow the instructions. Okay, so, and there's limitations. Entries are limited to United States residents, including Alaska and Hawaii. I did ask her if it was okay, and she said absolutely. So, you Alaskans and Hawaiians, you absolutely may enter this contest to win. Um, so, there is one entry per user ID, okay? And the entry period opens on Thursday, March 5th. And it will end on Tuesday, March 17th at noon central time in the United States. Okay. Now I'm going to put all these down in my show notes. So all of it will be out in writing. So you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. All right. Now, how do you win? Okay. Eligible entries will be assigned a number and a random number generator will determine the winning entry. The winner's user ID will be announced on the Thursday, March 19th episode of Midmo Mama. You must watch the episode to find out if you win. Okay, I'm not going to post. I'm not going to post the winner in my show notes. You have to watch the program. All right. And I hate to be a stickler about that, but that's my rule. It's my giveaway, so I'm allowed to make the rules. Uh, so I guess as long as I don't make you buy something. Because all those giveaways are like, you don't have to buy anything to win. So you don't have to buy anything to win, but you have to watch my episode. And that's free. That doesn't cost you anything, but maybe a little bit of time. I think that's okay. Okay. So you must watch the episode to find out if you win. The winner must contact me via email at midmomama2, numeral2, at gmail.com. I'll 
post it down there below. The winner will have 30 days from the date of the original announcement to claim their prize. Unclaimed prize or forfeit, okay? So if you don't claim your prize within 30 days of my announcement, uh, uh, you forfeit the prize. And either I'll make another arrangement to give it for another giveaway, or uh, I guess I should determine that. Maybe I'll have a redraw. That's only fair if she's offering to give something away and nobody claims it after 30 days, then I think there should be a redraw, don't you think? I think there should be. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. YouTube is not affiliated with this giveaway in any way. All right? Okay. Well, I think that wraps it up for Mama's show and tell at this point. So let's move on to the next segment. All right, so now we've made it to the Mama's Crafts segment. This will probably be most people's favorite favorite segment, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I love watching um, the Knitting and Crochet podcast, and this is the whole reason why I'm doing this, is because I love... I love the finished objects and the works in progress and and that kind of thing. So I'm looking forward to sharing with you. So I only have one finished project to share. And now I have to reach outside of the camera because I forgot to pull all my stuff together. Rookie, rookie fails. I'm, I'm the rookie fail person starting out. So just, you have to forgive me. So I'm going to stretch. I'll be right back. So just recently... Last month, the day before Valentine's Day, that's when it was, I finished my husband's socks. And here I have, they're, they're a little tiny bit stretched out because um, he's worn them a few times since Valentine's Day. And I just ran upstairs and put them on the sock blocker so that they would look prettier. <laughs> so, so this is what I made. Aren't they beautiful? Okay. And then the other side, I guess it doesn't matter which side they show. They're, they're both the same. They're, they're the same on both sides. I like them. I put them upside down on so sock blockers because my husband has long feet. I love telling people that my husband wears size 15 shoe. <laughs> it always makes people's jaw drops. It's, it's typical for us. So I made these for my husband, and I'm really happy with them. Um, these are his bed socks. He wears them to bed because um, his feet get cold at nighttime. And um, I was learning how to make socks. I made a pair of worsted weight for myself, and because um, I was start, just starting out, and so I thought, well, I'll make a pair for my husband, and I'll make worsted. Uh, worsted weight pair of socks because because his feet are so big I didn't I didn't want to make fingering weight socks for my husband is that bad well I don't ever intend to make fingering weight socks for my husband I love him I do I do love him but I'm not doing fingering weight socks I don't I don't know I guess it would be no different than Making fingering weight shawl that would take a long time, but I don't know. Anywho, so this is the pattern Rye from Tin Can Knit. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I'm, I'm going to refer to Ravelry quite a bit because everybody does. That's where all my patterns are, and it's where all my stuff is, and it's easier. It's so much more convenient to find patterns on Ravelry than just surf everywhere on the internet trying to find stuff. Okay, so that's why I use Ravelry. Um, the yarn I'm using is a discontinued base, but it's the Parlay base from Nerd Girl Yarns. Um, the colorway is called Carnival of Time, and I think it was a limited ed Well, all of her colorways are limited editions, uh, so I think the colorway is, is, uh, is, is uh, discontinued as well. Um, but that's what I used. Um, the Parlay is a merino bamboo. And it's beautiful and it's soft. And I guess most people wouldn't make socks out of that, but they fit nice and um, they're comfortable and they're warm. 
and um, he likes them a lot, so he wears them every night. He starts out in them, and usually he kicks them off, but that was, he was kicking his uh, other bed socks off also, so, so there's those. Um, I hope you like them, and if you don't, it's okay. He likes them very much. He he chose this yarn. I don't know, but I showed him all the all the worsted weight yarn I had, and out of everything I had, he chose this one. So um, I made them in the colors that he likes, and he really enjoys wearing them. And I'm very happy that he's happy. So that was that's the only thing I finished recently. I'm very slow. I have to confess. I do not whip out projects the way other people do. So, unfortunately, I may not have finished objects every single episode. If that's what if that's what you're here for is only that, then you're going to be sadly disappointed because I just I don't I don't have time. And um I do the best I can, but I'm slow. I'm a very slow knitter and a very slow crocheter. But I do the best I can. So now I'm going to talk about the stuff I'm working on right now. And I've got two active projects. I have, I think I have four or five projects that are in hibernation right now. And I'm not going to talk about them right now because um, I would rather talk about them when I'm working on them rather than, you know, say, well, I've got this one that I haven't worked on and this I haven't worked on. I'm only going to show you stuff that I'm actively working on because I think otherwise I'll be here all day showing you stuff. But the, this thing... Here's what I have. I have a beautiful crochet blanket that I'm working on. I know you can't see me, but here's here it is. It's so lovely. Um, I am working on a blanket for a couple that I know who is getting married. A throw. I have a cat, so I'm trying to prevent him from jumping up on top of my studio um, and ruining everything. Um, but this blanket is the Summer Mist Throw um, by Kim Guzman. I hope that's pronounced right. If I'm not saying names correctly, please forgive me. And if I say something wrong, please let me know. Because I would rather say it correctly than be a fool <laughs> and pronounce names the wrong way all the time. So, um, so please let me know. Um, the yarn... I am using is I love this yarn by Hobby Lobby. The colorways I'm using, oh, Booze is about to jump up here, so watch out. So the colors I'm using, the the darker pink is called Rosy Cheeks. Here he comes. Hey, Boots, how you doing, bud? Yeah, I'm doing my TV show for the first time. Don't you dare jump up on anything, otherwise I get mad at you. So um, we got Rosy Cheeks. This is Stone Wash, the blue. Still blue stone wash. Then we got um, the light pink, which is soft pink, and then of course we got the gray, which is gray mist. Okay, so we got gray mist, rosy cheeks, soft pink, and stone wash, and it's very lovely. It's a very simple pattern. Um, it's a, it's a, it's um, it drapes nicely. You know, and I know I've, I know that this softens up more nicely in the war, so I'll make sure I wash it, make it nice and soft before I gift it. But these were her, her wedding colors are going to be, um, rose gold. <clears throat> Let's see. Rose gold, soft pink, and country blue. <coughs> so... Rosy cheeks was as close as I could get to rose gold. It's more like more of a mauve. I hope she's not disappointed. I don't know. I guess I'll find out. You know, you make a gift for somebody, and if they hate it, it's kind of a gamble that you make. Um, but how, who's going to hate something that was handmade? Some people, maybe, I don't know. But if they don't like it, that's fine. They can, they can put it in a closet for a guest or something, I guess. I don't know. But, um, it's beautiful. Um, and I'm, I think I'm a little beyond halfway done with the body of it. And then there's border to knit. But this is lovely and I'm enjoying working on it. And I hope that I make some more progress on that very, very soon. 
The second project that I'm working on, I keep in my um, little blind, blind mice cheese bag. It is, let me make sure I say the right company. This is, um, this is a bag made by um, Art by Anna. She used to make gradient cakes and she used to be a, do cake parties where you would, it was like a rotation thing. I never participated in one. And I had I had intended to, but she changed her, um, the direction of her business and she stopped making gradient cakes and went with her sewing business. And uh, so I, I've bought several um, bags from her over the years. And so this is one, it's, it's cute. But inside this bag, I have my very first pair of toe-up socks. Two at once. Ain't that cute? I'll show you the pattern. So I'm using the Knit Picks, it's called the Two at Once Toe Up Magic Loop Socks by the Knit Picks Design Team. Um, the yarn I'm using is called, um, it's discontinued, uh, they don't make it anymore, but it's called Yarn B uh, Walk Away Sock Yarn. Um, it, of course, is a fingering weight yarn. Colorway is number 22 waltz. Anyway, don't matter. You can't get it anymore. It's discontinued. But it's a number one fingering weight yarn. Um, it is 75% superwash wool and 25% polyamide. And <laughs> my old age is showing because I have a hard time reading. Uh, 1.75 ounces per ball. It's uh, 49.6 grams, 227 yards, 208 meters. And I, got, I have two, so one per sock, essentially. So this is my first time making socks. I'm using um, Knitter's Pride. You don't, I think those are Zings. Knitter's Pride Zing needles. No my idea. daughter keeps interrupting me. That's why I raised my hand because I don't want to just blurt out talking. It's okay. I'm waiting. Bye. All right. Love you. So I'm using the Knitter's Pride. Knitter's Pride Zing. I use a lot of the Knitter's Pride needles just because I think they're more affordable. Um, and... Um, this one's a 40, 40 inch circular needle um, size US 1.5 or um, 2.5 millimeter um, needles. And I'm not very far. This is my first time making them. I tell you what, getting started is not easy. But, uh, but I'm getting there. You can see little toe pockets forming. I don't know if you can see that, but my little toe pocket's for me. So I know I'm doing doing well on that. So, uh, so we'll see. I go to, um, I have a knitting group that I meet with on Monday nights. And that's pretty much, we're, we're doing, we're doing these two at, a, two at once, two at magic loop socks together as a group. Because um, none of us have done it this way before. And uh, we're really interested in seeing if um, make them, making them with this technique helps us to finish our socks and th stick with them longer rather than knitting one and then putting it down for a while to make something new and then picking them up again. So we shall see how that goes. But that is all I have. It's not folding right. My creases all have to match up. 
So that's all I'm currently working on. Um, the final segment in my craft. I am... I am... One of my favorite things to do on Ravelry is to look at my pattern highlights. And I thought it would be fun to share um, five notable patterns from Ravelry. Um, each time I record. So here's what I'm going to do. It's, I have them listed alphabetically. They're not in any order. They're not in, in order from my favorite to my least favorite. At, at, by any means. They're just alphabetically listed. And I will show. Um, not only will I have the pattern link. But I'll show the page. So that if you look for it. And it doesn't match the picture. Then you'll say. Well that's not the right one. But um. The first one that I wanted to talk about, and I'm clicking, so if you hear me clicking, uh, don't be too upset. But the first one I wanted to show you was um, Bamboo Forest by Lucia Stepankova. Step, yeah, Stepan, Stepankova. Um, uh, it is a crochet pattern. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, she just published it last month in February. Um, it uses a fingering weight yarn. Uh, she uses a three millimeter hook. And it makes one size, but you'll need 1,094 yards to 2,187 yards. It has U U.S. Uh, crochet terminology. It's available in English and Slovak languages. So it is a free Ravelry download and it's utterly beautiful. I just, it caught my eye. And then, um, so there's that. That's pattern number one that I, I really, really liked in my pattern highlights. Pattern number two. So this one I'm very happy about. As soon as I saw it in my pattern highlights, I was so tickled to death. This one is called Hugh the Rainbow Elephant. It is a crochet stuffy um, animal and it is beautiful and it is cheerful and it warms my heart when I see it. It's made from sport weight yarn. It was published last month. Um, sport weight yarn. It uses a um, two different size hooks, a, uh, a 2.75 millimeter hook, which is a C, and it also uses a 2.5 millimeter hook. Um, it comes in U.S. crochet terminology, um, and it is in English plus four additional languages. So it's available in English, Dutch, French, German, and Spanish. How amazing is that? Um, it costs five dollars and fifty cents. Um, but if you buy five items in her Ravelry store, you get twenty percent off. Um, the discount is applied automatically at checkout. So. But it does not include ebooks. Anyway, I thought that was just absolutely adorable, and so I wanted to highlight that in my um, in my program. Love it. Love love how cute that is. Just adorable. The third pattern that I would like to um, highlight, and it, my first three in a row happen to be crochet patterns, which is fantastic. So the third pattern I would like to highlight. Um, in this segment is, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm just going to do the best I can. It's called Oknos. O-K-N-O-S. Oknos. And by Silke uh, Turhorst. And excuse me, my, my speech makes it a little bit difficult to pronounce some words. And I might talk about that a little bit later. So um, bear with me on my speech. But um, Silke Turhorst um, is the name of the designer. Um, I like the name Zilke. I took a German class in my freshman year of high school. And when we got to choose names, I chose that name for myself, Zilke. Because I just liked... Well, it made me think of silk and soft and glamour. So that's why I chose the name. But it, it's a lovely name, Zilke. And I don't know if it's pronounced Zilke. With a with a sound, or if it's more of a z zilka, 
I know, I know in my German class he had us pronounce it Zilke. So, I don't know. I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Anyway, again, this one was published last month in February. Suggested yarn is fingering. Hook size is a three millimeter. Um, they suggest 761 yards for this pattern. It's designed for one size, but it says it's easily adjustable. They use US crochet terminology and it's available in English and German. $3.99 in Euro. I love it. That's all I'm going to say. I love it. The fourth pattern I wanted to talk about is called Synchronicity by Cheryl Faust. F-A-U-S-T. Cheryl Faust. It's a knitting pattern. It's beautiful. Oh my goodness. I love, I love, I love, I love the stitch pattern of this one. Um, it was published last month. Um, she recommends worsted weight yarn, which is wonderful. Um, everybody wants to use fingering weight for everything. And it's a little bit discouraging because I like, I like, you know, the, the quicker gratification of, you know, a heavier weight yarn. So, um, so I really appreciate that this one is written in worsted weight. Um, <clears throat> let's see, she uses several different needle sizes throughout. So she uses used US 4, 3.5 millimeters. She uses used US 5, uh, 3.75 millimeters. She uses a US 6, 4 millimeter, and a US 7, uh, 4.5 millimeter. Um, she also uses a crochet hook, believe it or not, uh, 3.5 millimeter. E, an E hook. Um, so recommended yardage is 625 to 850 yards. And multiple sizing options are available. I love a multi-use pattern. I really do. Uh, you can make any size you want. Um, it's The pattern is $7. That is a little bit on the high end of what I would consider for a single pattern but it looks like it's fairly size inclusive which is fantastic um, but she does have a special if you buy three of her patterns you get one free so you put four patterns in your cart at the same time from her Ravelry store and the least expensive one will be free so uh, she greatly appreciates um, those who support her designs. I've never made anything from her, but boy, that is just an absolutely beautiful shawl uh, for $7 US. So um, check that one out if you get a chance. And then finally, number five, um, this is a, sw a sweater, a pullover sweater um, called Willard Bulky by Alicia Plummer. Um, it's a knitting knitting pattern. A pullover sweater. Um, it was published last month in February. Um, the yarn weight suggested is super bulky. So if you have super bulky yarn or you love super bulky yarn, um, this is the pattern for you. I love it. Um, it uses um, US 11 8 millimeter needles and also US 10 and a half 6.5 millimeter needles. Size is available. Oh my goodness. It is available as we're talking bust size here. Um, 33 and a quarter, 37, 40 and a half, 44 and a quarter, 48 inch bust sizes. It's intended to be worn with three to five inches of positive ease. It's photographed with five inches of po uh, po positive ease. Anyway, the sweater um, is available for $7.50. It's a lovely sweater and I would pay $7.50 for that. Yeah, I'm not really too particular. If there's something I like, um, chances are I'm going to buy it. And I have bought so many patterns that I haven't made yet. And it, that's so dumb. That's so dumb. Don't buy a pattern until you're going to make it. Although that's what they count on, isn't it? That's what they count on for you to buy a pattern. They don't care if you make it or not. They just they want you to buy their pattern. That's good marketing. That's good business. So have a beautiful picture of your 
of your pattern and people will buy it. So that concludes my five notable patterns on Ravelry. So I think at this point it's time to move on to this next segment. So now we've made it to the Mama Bake section. I will probably trade off between cooking and baking or whatever I feel like doing. Okay, it's going to be, but you will get one cooking or baking segment per episode. I enjoy baking. Um, I enjoy cooking and I know lots of people who enjoy it. And so if I enjoy it, I think other people will. So um, that's my intent. Um, but I have to forewarn you about my filming. Um, I made a rookie fail. Um, so, you know, as I discover how to direct my program, um, you'll see little quirks here and there that just don't work out right. But um, I wanted to tell you that when I filmed my cooking video, I didn't include the stove top in my frame. And that's where I pulled out my baked item and patted it out or, you know, it, so you're not gonna get to see that, but there's are, there are a couple of frames where I held up the pan so you could see what I did. And so, you know, comedy of errors, but um, it's played in fast motion and I do voiceovers to show you what I do at what step. And there would be beautiful music in the background. So I hope you enjoy this segment. The recipe I made this time is called Almond Triangles. I got it from this cookbook that I use. It's called uh, the 354th Maintenance Squadron Recipes from Those Who Served. I was active duty Air Force when I was younger. And uh, we had a fundraiser cookbook and so I decided I was gonna go back and make some of the recipes that were in here. So this time, but this time I'm making the almond triangles. It's a recipe by Ann Smith. It's a very common name. So if you're Ann Smith and you're watching this, this might be your recipe, I don't know. But um, I do hope you enjoy watching that segment. We'll meet you back here at the end. So you start by lining a 15 by 10 inch jelly roll pan with foil. Then you want to take two sticks of softened butter, brought, you know, brought to room temperature. I do that by just leaving it sit out for two hours and that softens it well enough. You're going to use an entire pound of butter for this recipe, so um, make sure you're aware of that. To the butter you want to add a half a cup of granulated sugar. Here you're going to add a half teaspoon of salt and then three quarter teaspoon of almond extract. Give it a good mix with your hand mixer. Add your one egg and mix it around. Finally, you add two and three quarter cups of flour and mix well.
at this point you want to um, pour that mixture into your pan that's lined with foil you want to pat it all down and push it part way up the sides of the pan Then you refrigerate it for 15 minutes. Then you pull it out of the refrigerator and then you want to prick it with a fork. That's what I'm doing in that picture right there. I sure wish I had gotten a picture of the stovetop. I didn't realize it wasn't in the camera until it was too late. I'll know better next time. So after pricking it with a fork, you put it in the oven for 10 minutes. And it came out of the oven, my husband's checking it out. That's Scott. And he's nibbling on my, on my almonds. Funny guy. So now it's time to make the almond mixture that goes on top. So you've, you've already pulled your crust out of the oven and now you want to add um, in a saucepan. Get a medium, get a medium to large saucepan because you're going to see, you're going to see why here in a little bit. So you want to put a cup of brown sugar, one third cup of honey, a half a pound of butter, that's two sticks. A quarter cup of granulated sugar and you're gonna mix that together there's the sugar going in and you're gonna mix that together on your stovetop you're gonna cook it over low heat and you're gonna be stirring stirring until those um, sugars are dissolved You're going to be stirring for a long time because you want that mixture to come to a boil. You're going to bring it to a low boil. You don't want it to burn heavy or fast. You want a nice low boil. Once it reaches the boiling stage, you want to let it boil without stirring for three minutes. So you'll see me at this point lift my um, spatula up and let it boil for three minutes. done boiling so at that point you remove it from the heat you add the cream <laughs> and then you add the almonds if you saw that look of surprise on my face <laughs> my brain just didn't connect to that I was adding so many almonds to such a small pot so if I was smart I would have used a smaller pot but you want that all mixed up nice and good make sure you get all that sugar in there and then you want to spread it over top of that cookie uh, cookie batter or that baked cookie. Spread it all out nice and neat, nice and evenly. And then you want to put it back in the oven. Um, and bake it for 15 minutes. And there it is. So these are almond triangles, but we cut ours into squares because we figured we would be eating two triangles anyway. So this way we just eat one square and we're happy. Now we've made it to the section called Mama Reads. I love to share what I'm reading about. I love to read. Um, um, and so I just wanted to share a few things that I'm currently reading. I finished um, an audiobook recently. This is my first time reading it. I know it's a very popular um, novel, but it was Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. I'm not typically a sci-fi person. Um, but I wanted, I wanted to go outside my comfort zone and 
from time to time I do read outside of my typical genre just to give my brain something, a new way to think um, because um, I'm all about romance and fiction and history um, and I'm not so much about fantasy or sci-fi and so, you know, I, I just try to um, expand my thought processes. I thoroughly enjoyed that book. I listened to it on audio. Uh, I have a 40-minute drive to work and a 40-minute drive back from work, so I have plenty of time to absorb um, audio um, books. So I, I really enjoyed the storytelling in that story. So I, I recommend it. Um, so some things that I'm currently reading, um, I'm in actual book form, I'm reading Biscuits, Butter, and Blessings, Farm Fresh Devotions for Hope and Comfort by Linda Kozar. Um, it's a cute little devotional book. Um, I have a, a craft room downstairs that I might show you if I get organized. Um, but before I sit down to craft over there, I just open one and I read one. So I'm not very far along. I've been reading this since December. And so every time I go down down there, um, I go down there. But each each page has a little, a little talk and it has a little faith check down here. It's got a little verse up here. And then it's got a little um, quote on the other page. I bought this at Hobby Lobby. And... And I saw that on Goodreads, um, she has um, several others that are similar to this, but I don't have, and I, I don't know that I will get one. I got so many devotionals downstairs that, you know, I have a lifetime of devotionals, so I might not buy more. But this is adorable. It's an adorable book, and I'm so glad I have it because it's just cute. She's got humor in it, and it's just down home. And it's down home, and I like down home. Um, another book I'm reading, um, I have a Bible study group and we're currently doing Open Your Bible, God's Word is for You and for Now. It's by Rachel Myers and Amanda Bible Williams. Her, her last name is actually Bible, that's her maiden name. Um, so I think that's kind of sweet. Um, this is a basic Bible study, study uh, to get your foot, feet wet into studying your Bible, how to study your Bible and that type of thing. Um, I've been studying Bible years. I've studied the Bible twice all the way through, but I have really actually enjoyed connecting um, with the writers of this study, and um, I'm getting a lot out of it. There's um, six of us who are studying through this together, and we're having a, we're having a wonderful time connecting. Uh, not only with God, but we're also connecting with one another. And it's been just a humongous blessing. So we're working through that, and we love it. Um, on my Kindle, I am reading a novel called The Rainbow by D.H. Lawrence. And I am I was enjoying it. I, I got through the fifth, fifth or sixth chapter, and now it's slowing down. I didn't enjoy the... The previous chapter I read, I didn't enjoy it as much, so so now I'm I'm not reading it as often. Um, but I will pick it back up again real soon because I would like to finish the book and move on to something else. So, and I yes, I am I am a book finisher. I don't have to finish a book. I understand that no one's required. There's no rule. There's no law that we have to finish the books we read. But I I feel like I owe. I owe the, uh, I, I want to finish, okay, I don't owe anybody anything. I want to finish the book, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, and then on audio, I'm listening to The Masterpiece by Francine Rivers. Um, I'm enjoying that. I'm almost at the end, so um, I'll be finishing that real soon. And I, I really like that story. It's really good. Um, Francine Rivers, I've read several of her novels, and I, I really enjoy her writing. Um, I enjoy her message. Um, she shares um, an important message in her stories. So um, so I really enjoy her work. So that's about it for my reading segment. So now it's time to move on to the next one. We've come to the segment where we talk about movies. 
Um, yes, I watch some television, but I don't really want to talk about television. I am a movie fan. I have loved movies um, for a long time. Um, I went through a very long period where I watched a lot of classic movies. Um, I even have a little bit of a claim to fame for old movies. Um, I'm not going to share everything about my life in the first episode. That's not right. I have to spread it all out. So I'll share a story with you in a future episode about my little, you know, seven minutes of fame. But, um, so I watch all kinds of movies. Um, I prefer musicals. As a matter of fact, I like the Technicolor musicals. The best, my all-time favorite, of course, is Me, Me in St. Louis with Judy Garland. Um... Just, oh, I love that movie. I love it. Mm, I love that movie. It means so much to me. And not just because I'm Midmo Mama. I mean, I am Midmo, and I'm and I'm proud to live in Missouri. I love the state, but um, that's not the reason why I love Meet Me in St. Louis. I love it for other reasons. But, um, so recently I've watched the following movies. I watched um, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. It's a 1966 musical with Zero Mostel and Phil Silvers. It had its good funny moments. Um, but it's a different kind of comedy um, than what I'm prone to enjoying. So you have to have I like silly and it, and it is silly in a silly way but it's just, it wasn't my kind of silly. So I'm, I'm never going to come on here and not recommend a film, but it really wasn't my thing. And I love musicals, so that's different. Um, I watched Zoom. It's a 2006 movie with Tim Allen and Courtney Cox and Chevy Chase. And it was a cute little kids movie where... Um, in my brain, I, re cause I, just got, had, I had just gotten finished reading Ender's Game, so I'm like, it's like an Ender's Game, only for children, uh, for um, superheroes. Because they're superheroes and they all had powers. And so I thought it was kind of cute, but it, it was kind of dopey for, you know. But it was a kid's movie, so it was cute. Um, I watched The Little Princess, 1939, with Shirley Temple and Richard Green. That was a lovely little movie. Um, her father's in the military in England, and uh, she has to go um, to um, a boarding school um, while her daddy goes off to war. And um, turns out his she gets word that his, her daddy died, and she became she went from being a, a high society student in the school to um, a maid. <laughs> so. That was cute, but it had a happy ending, and I thought it was lovely. Cute little Shirley Temple movie. She's probably a little older in that one. I'd say she's probably about seven or eight, so she wasn't the cute little cute little girl, but she was a little older girl in it. Um, another movie we watched for Shirley Temple was The Bachelor and the Bobby Soxer. It had Cary Grant and Myrna Loy, as well as Shirley Temple. And I guess it was fine for 1947. <sighs> But in this day and age, you're thinking, why on earth would they put a grown man with a high school girl and try to, you know, in, in order for him to, in order to punish this guy? And the whole premise of the film is just kind of stupid. <laughs> but I guess people just didn't, people weren't as, dis, I wouldn't say they weren't as discerning back then as they are today, but. You couldn't make a movie like that today and get away with it. I mean, it's just, the whole premise of the film was just kind of backward. But it, it's always wonderful to see Cary Grant and Myrna Loy act together. One of my favorite films with them together, of course, was uh, Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House. And they were, they were beautiful together. I just love them. And Myrna Loy, oh, Myrna Loy. Uh, another movie we watched was That Foresight Woman. Uh, with Greer Garson, Errol Flynn, and Walter Pidgeon. Um, it's a 1949 film. Um, I, I thought it was lovely. I love Greer Garson. I think she's just 
a lovely lady. Um, she's always, she's always beautiful in her films. Greer Garson was in the first classic film that I remember watching on my own, independently. Um, I had watched a film called Blossoms in the Dust, and it was about how a woman in Texas got the word um, illegitimate taken off of children's birth certificates. Because um, when it came to marrying, if 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 that word illegitimate was on the birth certificate, then that made them the woman ineligible for marriage. And so I thought that was a really interesting story, and I cried my eyes out. Oh my goodness, I cried. Um, but uh, it's called Blossoms in the Dust. So I, I enjoy movies with Greer Garson in it because of that. And then another, uh, a mo uh, we'll bring it up to modern times. I watched a movie called Love Jacked um, from 2018. It had Amber Stevens West and Shamir Anderson. And it was a romantic comedy. Um, the, uh, the, the leading woman... Um, goes to Africa and she meets this guy on the third date and they decided they were going to get married so she called her family and said, I'm getting married! And then she walked in on this guy cheating on her. And she goes back to the United States humiliated with, you know, obviously. And she didn't want to tell her family that she had made a mistake. So she's in this diner trying to figure out what she's going to do and she meets this guy. <laughs> And so, for whatever reason, she confided her situation with him. And then he he offered to be this guy, you know, to make up the story. And they make up this huge sham, get together. And, of course, it was fairly predictable, and it ended up... But it had a happy ending, of course. And I just... I love movies like that. I love, I love predictable. I love romance. I love... Like, the characters were beautiful. The men were beautiful, the lady was beautiful, um, and so I really enjoyed that movie uh, quite a bit. And that wraps it up for movies, so now it's time to move on to the next segment. So now we've come to the part of the program where I talk about miscellaneous things. So we're a miscellaneous mama. Here we have my cat boots. I don't know if he's making it into the frame, but this is my cat. His name is Boots. Okay. Hello. Say hello to everybody. He's not gonna. He's gonna run off here. I'm gonna let him go. Oh no. He got his fingernail in my sweater. He probably ruined my sweater. Oh no. I got a thread. I might be able to weave that back in. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, he comes back up in here again. So that's my cat. Um, his name is Boots. He's an indoor kitty. I am, I don't mind telling my age, I'm 47 years old. I have a husband. We've been married, uh, we got married in 2012. Eight years this summer. Um, I have three kids. I have um, my son, Sean, and my son, Cameron. They're both in their 20s, um, and they live in Alaska, uh, which is where their dad lives. And then um, my daughter, uh, she just turned 20. Uh, she lives down here with me and uh, me and my husband. And I have a stepson. His name's Joshua. And he's 21. He'll be 21? He'll be 21 this year. Yeah, he's going to be 21 this year. So Audrey's 20. Um, I live in Sedalia, Missouri, which is a medium-sized town or small size city but as you know i like to knit and crochet and i like to cook and i like to bake i like to watch movies and read and um i guess i should talk a little bit about why i speak the way i do i had um tongue cancer in 2019 and i had to have a portion of my tongue removed last february a year ago february i took out a portion of my tongue and then they took tissue from my wrist and artery out and they formed what they call a free flap inside my tongue. Um, I don't want to show it to you. 
if I'm talking and my mouth is open, you might see it. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to willfully stick my tongue out so you can see it. Um, now you're going to, now you're going to be looking for it. Um, but so I had to learn how to speak with an artificial tongue. I did have to have chemo and radiation. That was the most difficult season of my entire life. Um, I really struggled with that uh, quite a bit, but it was short, short lived. I only had to do it for seven weeks. I had to do three, three chemo sessions uh, with 32 um, radiation treatments in between, but I, I only had to do, um, in the end of it, they only made me do two chemo uh, treatments but I had to do all of the radiation. And it caused um, damage uh, to my vocal cords. So I'll, I perpetually sound like I have a cold, but it was just because the radiation damaged my throat. Um, I have scars, you can see them. I had a tracheotomy tube um, after surgery. Um, they had to cut me from here to here and then along the side here you might be able to see this car. It's kind of hard to see it, but it goes all the way back here. And uh, so I have that. Um, and so it took me a while to recover from all of that. Um, I couldn't swallow. I had se severe... I have to tell you about it maybe another time, but I don't know. I had um, goop forms when your stuff dries out and it it's horrible. Um, I had to have a feeding tube because I couldn't eat my mouth. I, I had a hard time. Uh, I lost my taste buds. And your taste buds are so, your taste buds are so important for actually enjoying food because when you put something in your mouth that has no flavor, it becomes this blob of gross, of grossness, um, that you have to figure out how to work around in your mouth and swallow. And my gag reflex was just out of this world. So I had to, I couldn't, I couldn't swallow. So I had to have a feeding tube for a while. Um, I lost 80, 83 pounds. I keep telling people I lost about 50 pounds, but that's not true. When I started out, um, I was 230 pounds, and now I am down to 147 pounds, um, which I'm really happy about, but losing 83 pounds in a year um, is not the healthy way to lose weight. But, you know, I've always told people I take my wins where I can get them, and, you know, since I had plenty to lose, I, I really don't feel like I lost out on anything. Um, by losing all that weight. Um, I do struggle, struggle with eating today, um, just maneuvering stuff in my mouth. My, my taste buds are almost almost completely back. Um, taste is a little bit diminished. Um, maneuvering food is more difficult though, and I cannot eat leafy vegetables. I can't eat spinach, I can't eat lettuce, I can't eat parsley. I can't eat any leafy green vegetable. It gets stuck on the roof of my mouth. I can't scrape it off. I can't swallow it. It gets back there and all those leaves just kind of, I don't know what they do back there. They, they mingle, but they won't go down. So I can't do lettuce, spinach. So my husband orders salad and he can't stand vegetables. So I eat all his tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, olives off of his salad and he just eats the lettuce and cheese. So so salad is funny, but um, that's really the only challenge I have. I have a hard time eating grainy food. I can't eat cold cereal because the crunchy stuff just gets under my tongue and I can't maneuver it around. Um, so there's some things I can't eat, but it's not because I'm not allowed to eat it. It's just because I can't, I can't make it happen. But, um, so that's the reason why I talk strange. And if, if that bothers you, I understand, you know, I have, I was doing the, the baking video and I noticed that I make this really weird thing with my mouth. I don't even know I'm doing it. 
um, but it's annoying to watch. So, you know, if you're, if you're one of those people that mannerisms really get on your nerves, I might not be the one to watch. Um, but, you know, I know, I know I'm not going to be for everybody, but I do hope that those who find me and, um, want to connect with me, I hope that they can look past my, my, my obvious, um, limitations. Um, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's a little bit of background for me. Um, I hope to share more with you, um, in the episodes ahead. Um, so, Joe, so I, I think it's time to, um, move on to the next segment. We have reached the Mama is Done portion. Um, I just want to remind you, do not uh, forget to um, enter the giveaway for the 10 inch, for the 10 inch sock ruler if you're interested. Um, like I said, um, the uh, make sure you follow the direction. So um, either re-listen to my broadcast um, or my show, re-listen to that segment of the show or um, read the show notes and make sure you're following the directions um, and do, do what I ask. Um, like I said, it's not the answer to the question, it's whether or not you follow the directions. And I will answer the, uh, I will um, announce the winner in the next episode. I do hope you enjoyed um, spending your time with me. I am grateful for everyone. Uh, I know your time is valuable. Um, watching me is a choice. And so it means a lot to me that you have given me a slice of your time. If you enjoyed what you saw today, please click the subscribe button. I think it's up here or down here. I don't know where it is located on the screen, but it's somewhere around here. Subscribe. Um, and that will just help you find me more easily next time. Um, you can also um, click on the bell if you want to. Um, that will get, send you a notice. A notification whenever I post a new episode. Um, however, just know that episodes are going to be posted on the first and third Thursday of every month. Um, if you want to ask me a question, you can comment below or you can contact me via email at midmomama2, the number two, at gmail.com. You'll see the link below. Um, I can also be found on Instagram at midmomama1, numeral one. I'm also known on Ravelry as Jennifer Reels. So J-E-N-N-I, capital F-E-R, capital R-E-A-L-S. So until next time, I hope that you have a wonderful couple of weeks. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope that you will tune in again. Um, in the meantime, may God bless you and we'll see you around. Thank you. Bye-bye.